Blessings, beloved. Welcome back. Let's talk about Mercury forming this relationship to Pluto. So I was thinking about it the last few days and um, realized that uh, the degrees that Mercury is at now since it uh, stopped to change direction, that is to get out of his retrograde period and um, proceed forward, he's uh, tracking the degrees that um, where, where he creates a trine to Pluto. And this is quite significant and quite fascinating, actually, in a lot of different ways. Um, but first of all, um, when you look at Mercury's retrograde cycle, you'll see that it formed a trine to Pluto twice previously, uh, once in August and once in September. And as of today, really, he's close enough to catching up to that trine aspect again and in a couple of days time it'll be exact and i'll show you that in on the screen in a minute but i just thought how interesting you know mercury pluto <clears throat> is the investigator you know it's that probing mind um it's the leaving no stone unturned you know with information with ideas with um exploring investigating uh, whether that's something you're personally interested in, um, studying uh, information that you are um, receiving from others, conversations you are having with people. You know, it's, it's all about the uh, world of communication in the spoken and written form. Um, and so, you know, that translates to all the interactions we are having, you know, because Mercury is a connector. He connects the dots. He connects us with um, information, people, ideas, things we hear, things we listen to, things we verbalize and articulate ourselves. And of course, at a much deeper uh, evolutionary level, it's the journey and process of transforming components of our own mind and perhaps transforming the components of our own mind relative to just things that we think about, ideas that we've had, concepts that we've had um that are useless or no longer useful or shallow you know pluto is uh the soul so it penetrates to the deepest layers and deepest levels of our own psyche it's actually a really powerful aspect to have in your uh, natal chart in any aspect really um, and each aspect, of course, has its own sort of attribute and characteristics. And so in this case, we're talking about Pluto forming a trine. So um, there's an integration with the, the messenger, the God who was known as the messenger, who traveled between all worlds, um, forming this harmonious aspect to Pluto, which is the, the soul's evolution collectively and individually, so a harmonious aspect speaks to a sense of ease and integration with our own uh, mental processes. Now, there are some um, principles that I'd like to just read out in a moment, characters and themes and then some shadow qualities. But I thought it was really interesting and um, funny that, you know, this whole series on Jeffrey Dahmer that's uh, pretty a pretty hot topic of late and i've spoken about it a little bit myself i've showed some charts and things like that because he's got two very powerful yods in his chart um and i've you know watched the series while this mercury has been uh connecting with pluto so you know mercury pluto is the investigative mind you know and while i've been watching the series my mind has been working in that very mercury pluto manner you know i've had a bit of a, a bit of an obsession with the series and um just you know sort of unpacking every kind of detail and nuance and a lot of people have said to me oh it's just so hard to watch i can't watch it and yeah i completely understand i think um you have to have a pretty um uh, well, everyone's got Pluto in their chart, but, you know, some people um, find, uh, you know, themes and, and um, stories like that just too gruesome, too gross, you know, and, and I can completely understand. I don't because I've got a very, very powerful Pluto in my chart. It aspects absolutely everything in my chart, everything. 
And so the way my psyche works, the way I operate as a, as a human being, as a soul, is in a very Plutonian way. So the darker shades of life, um, the shadow sort of sides of life, whether it's in my own self or whether it's yeah. something that I perceive outside of myself, um, it doesn't seem to cause a, a re, sort of a, a repulsion, you know. Um, it's not necessarily an attraction, but it's not a repulsion. And that's what Pluto actually brings up in us. It brings up things that we are um, extremely um, repulsed by or extremely, you know, um, magnetised, dazzled by, you know, obsessed by, right? So um, it's just very interesting that Mercury has been forming this aspect to Pluto and is about to form this trine again. And, you know, uh, for myself, I've been investigating a, a lot of different things with this um, case of, of Jeffrey Dahmer, not only watching the series, but as I've mentioned in the New Moon video, um, there's been uh, footage released from the actual trial. And so I've been kind of looking at bits and pieces of that as well. So let me just read a, a couple of things here and then I'll uh, bring up the chart and just make some closing comments. I just wanted to make a, this uh, just a short video. So the principles, Mercury, Pluto, a passionate and probing mind, deep insight into emotional causes and motivations, an interest in criminology or depth psychology, a gift for persuasive communication, mental struggles and obsessions, fear of one's dark or shadow thoughts, harmful and destructive communication, aggressive dogmas, beliefs, crude speech. So, you know, it, it, it has obviously both sides to the coin, right? Remember, though, that with this particular alignment at the moment, it is a trine aspect. So um, there's, there's just much more of an opportunity for integration, right, in terms of our own psyche and all the data that we've accumulated in, in our own mind, consciousness, uh, in our perceptions, in our thoughts and ideas, you know. Um, Pluto is, is going to tumble all that around, in, in a sense, in, in our own mind and, and show us, you know, um, what, what are we thinking about? What have we been thinking about? Uh, what actually has purpose and meaning? Um, what's what's real what's what's truthful uh what's beyond the surface of what appears with what people say and indeed with our own mind and thoughts as well it's going to tumble all that around and it's it's going to purge the unwanted the unnecessary um the garbage right because let's face it we live in such a high-tech age that we are constantly bombarded by data and information on every spectrum and because of our very nature as human beings and the component of us that has such a curious sort of element to our mind and um, the way the mind works in that we have about 70,000 thoughts flooding our mind every single day um, most of which, of course, we're not even aware of, right? So where do these thoughts come from? So you, there's so much going on in our mind all the time, right? And Pluto is like the ultimate, um, it's like the, the cleaner coming in and just cleaning out all the debris and all the shit that you just don't need to contain in your mind and um, loop over, over and over again. That's when Pluto Mercury is working in an integrative um, elevated sort of level. If it's working at that um, level where it becomes um, perhaps a, a matter of being out of control um, and the matter of obsession coming through, it, it can have a very deeply um, obsessive component to it with, with a belief, with an idea, with a thought you know, obsessive compulsive disorders, for instance, you know, uh, very much a Mercury-Pluto uh, combination of energy, right? Um, <clears throat> and of course, you know, having um, watched the series on Jeffrey Dahmer and looking at his chart and things of that, that's, it's very much a Mercury-Pluto um, journey that it's been for me, you know. Um, 
And interestingly enough, you know, Jeffrey Dahmer was a Gemini, so his ruling planet is Mercury. And Mercury is um, data that's, uh, you know, um, transferred or um, spoken about or, uh, you know, communicated, shared, etc. And Pluto is uh, many things, but it is also what brings things back up from the past. So here comes in this series of the life of Jeffrey Dahmer, whilst there's a Pluto trying Mercury. So it's a, you know, it's Pluto digging back into the past and bringing this information uh, to the world, as it were, um, through the series, right? And the amount of communication um, and, you know, verbal sort of exchange that's going on between people, between astrologers, between, you know, astrologers talking about it, um, people just obsessing, you know, about this, this series. It's, it's, it's um, yeah, it's just quite powerful. Okay, so here are some of the character and themes um, that define Mercury, Pluto, a passionate and probing mind, a potent blending of willpower and intellect, a restlessness, sorry, a relentless and profound curiosity, a gift for deep analysis and questioning, penetrating insight into emotional causes and motivations. And that's definitely been, you know, part of what I've been um, processing while I've been thinking about this story of this particular soul who played this um, played this role in, in life that repulses, you know, pretty much most people, right? Um, I guess for me, it's not that I don't find what he did repulsive. I, I find it extremely repulsive, but it doesn't trigger me, you know. Um, I have enough objectivity in the way I operate to be objective when I'm actually observing that for the purposes of the astrological learning and teachings. And that's because I've got so much Aquarius in my chart. And thank God for that, because that has gifted me the ability to be objective on things that um, perhaps, you know, a lot of people can't be, for instance, right? Um, okay, so where was I, um, into emotional causes and motivations, an ability to recognise a deeper significance in small details, urges to get to the bottom of problems, the probing instincts of a sleuth or detective, uh, an interest in depth psychology or criminology, a study of the shadow side of the psyche, a tendency to think and talk about sex. Yeah, well, I guess that certainly fits not been a subject that i've been talking about but uh, anyway perhaps some of you have um, let me know um, deep and persuasive communications intense conversations arousing opinions arousing opinions yeah urges to speak the forbidden i like that one blasphemy and he's say hmm. intense and powerful criticism the destructive effect of truth the breakdown of old philosophical models and certain certainties, a transformed point of view, exploded beliefs, the need for change, bulldozed, a road down to the centre of my mind, a perchant for dark comedy. Um, okay, so those are some of the ideas around character and themes, and I think... Um, this is really powerful relative to what's happening in Iran as well. The protests that have been going on there, which uh, speak to the um, severe oppression and assault, really, um, and injustices and um, levels of control uh, towards women and the young woman that lost her life. Um, uh, what's her name? I just, I want to say her name because I want to be respectful of that particular um, soul and not just say she. Um, <clears throat> I just posted something about her this morning. Uh, so her name is um, Masa Amini. 
and for those of you that are from those regions uh, or those of you that are following uh, the revolutions that are taking place in Iran would very well know who this individual was and um, sadly she lost her life she was only a young woman and so anyway look um, I think relative to what's been going on there in Iran this Mercury Pluto is definitely a part of it um, think of some of the the comments that I spoke about here um, intense and powerful criticism um, destructive effect of truth, breakdown of old philosophies, models, and certainties, a transformed point of view, exploded beliefs. You know, we're talking about hundreds and thousands of people on the streets chanting. That's Mercury, Pluto. Um, shadow qualities. So here are some of the shadow qualities that can um, manifest as well with this particular uh, combination of planets. A tendency toward mental fixation, and struggle, fear of polluting one's mind with dark or heavy images, obsession with one train of thought, extreme, ex okay, so I just want to say something here, obsession with one train of thought, that's um, OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. Um, <clears throat> extreme or fanatical opinions, a mind ready to explode, bad attitudes, antagonistic beliefs, harmful and destructive comments, aggressive dogma, a propaganda, tendencies toward mental domination, intellectual power struggles, desire to change other people's minds forcefully, urges to impose one's intellectual or philosophical model on the world, <laughs> an inclination to ask <clears throat> loaded questions uh, or make others confess, that would be uh, somebody of like a detective or something like that interrogating a person who's been uh, allegedly uh, convicted of a crime, you know, in the interview room. You know, when you see those scenes in movies or in real life <laughs> where people are being interrogated mentally, you know, sometimes they keep them in there for like 16 hours straight or something like that, you know, to completely break them. That's a Mercury Pluto thing. And the, the person who's doing that would, would likely have to have pretty strong Mercury Pluto in their own chart to be able to actually do that. Cause it's a, <clears throat> it's a real skill to be able to do that. Not anybody can do that. Right. So that's just more Mercury Pluto type of themes, for instance. Um, okay. Uh, an inkling, I read that. Um, an interrogative style of speaking, a habit of bad mouthing and sharing their dirt on others, intense or destructive gossip, nasty rumours and mudslinging, mud attempts to destroy others verbally, um, muckraking journalism, intrusive reporting, the poison pen or tongue, that's a great way to put it, the poison pen or tongue. Hmm. Devastating insults, um, crude speech, foul mouth, an obsession with sexual innuendo. And so the, the next sections, which I, I'm not going to read, just that he talks about some other qualities that have that are related to dream, dream images and themes, um, themes in deep self-exploration, um, the arts. So I know many of you will be saying, what's the book you're reading from? So there it is there. Uh, the Archetypes of the Universe by Red Butler. It's it's really um, one of my favourite books, actually. It's really, really great. So uh, actually, let me see what he says here. Themes in deep self-exploration. The Mercury-Pluto field tends to intensify people's mental processes as their minds become channels for emerging perinatal energies, although a great asset for verbal catharsis, um, journeys may need encouragement to allow any dark or profane sounds to emerge from inside them and be fully expressed. So if you were going into counselling or psychotherapy, um, perfect timing for it. If you are a counsellor or a psychotherapist, great transit to work with clients. Um, if you are studying something, 
um, learning, uh, whatever your mind has been occupied with in the last couple of months while Mercury has been in Virgo, went retrograde in, in Libra, forming this trine aspect to Pluto twice, once in October, uh, August, once in September, now again in October. Actually, let me just bring up the chart um, so that we can get a little look-see here. Okay, so there's Mercury there. Um, <clears throat> uh, where's my... Hmm, something's missing here. Did I... Okay, sorry, that's what it was. I forgot to share my screen. I think I did. Did I? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so here is Mercury at 25 degrees of Virgo, and here is Pluto at 26. So the last couple of months, Mercury has already tracked these degrees 25, 26, 27, which is when he formed his trine. To Pluto, a trine aspect is the same element to the same element. So Virgo is Earth, Capricorn is Earth. So two Earth elements form a trine together. That is an aspect that is 120 degrees, right? The trine aspect um, has many different attributes and characteristics to it, but one being that uh, it enables us to integrate the energies without resistance. And that's an important point. Um, <clears throat> Mercury and Pluto uh, at best is the ability to, to purge unwanted content and ideas and thoughts in order to um, break through the, the surface level and, and the shallow sort of level of anything to do with our mind and how our mind operates so you know you, you might be um you, you might be investigating something yourself whether that's in your personal life or whether that's in your work situation or you know just something that you're studying and learning about whatever it is it is an opportunity to purge um mental data and information that really just doesn't serve you right and and also get to the core and essence of the depth right of a particular idea or piece of information or knowledge um or, or, or communication or what was something that somebody told you or shared with you you know it's just the ability to probe very very deeply and this transit is only going to be in play here for now, just, you know, a couple of days, but it started, you know, a couple of months ago. So just think back to what's been happening in the last, you know, sort of um, two months from the point of view of Mercury and Pluto. And I've sort of described some of the themes that Mercury and Pluto speak to. And of course, have a look to see where Mercury is in your own chart. And of course, where Pluto is in your own chart relative to transiting Pluto and transiting Mercury, because those houses where Mercury and Pluto are is the field that these dynamics will be playing out in some kind of way. Now, this is that doesn't have to be a difficult experience. If anything, um, it's a transforming experience of your own um, psyche, your own mind, as it were, and discovering um, new truths and um, going into new levels of depth and new levels of understanding that have true substance, right, that somehow uh, facilitate the evolution of the soul as well, right? Um, and it's important because, you know, the, the evolution of the soul, which is something that uh, is, well, it's infinite really, but in each incarnation we are working through different um, levels of growth and development and evolution and if we think about how much um, the mind plays such a big part of how we perceive things how we think about things you know the minute you change your perception your reality changes that's how powerful our thoughts are so a pluto mercury aspect forming a trine 
is a really powerful portal for deep integration into deeper truths about your own soul's journey and evolution um, and growth moving forward. So I think um, that's about it. Um, <clears throat> I mentioned as well, I did a little short video, um, which I haven't put up on YouTube. I was going to put it in the shorts section, but it's only 60 seconds, those shorts. They, they should do them for about three minutes because you can't say much in 60 seconds. It's, it's so Gemini. That's a pure Gemini thing. And I don't do Gemini videos, so I find it hard to do a shorts. But I did a three-minute one. Um, and I've just posted it on uh, Facebook and Instagram. And it was just about the amazing things around Pluto at the moment, um, just from the point of view of <clears throat> its station period and um, stationing direct, that is. So let's just have a quick look at this. And I'm going to come back and do a really deep dive into this. So you can see here uh, around the 8th, Pluto stops. See the S next to Pluto? That's indicating to us that Pluto is stopping, right, in order to change direction. And his direction is going to be direct um, as opposed to retrograde because he's been retrograde the last six months, right? So um, here's what happens. First of all, um, it went, Pluto went retrograde at 28 degrees of Capricorn on the 30th of April, 2022. Uh, stations direct on the 26th degree around 8th, 9th of October. And then um, in March next year, on the 24th of March, enters the sign of Aquarius. And the last time it was in Aquarius was 248 years ago. So we're going to see much, much more around the matters of revolutions, humanitarian uh, matters coming to the rise in the biggest ways ever, right? I'll speak more to that when I come back and do the video. But just a few things to think about. Um, so it enters Aquarius in March and <clears throat> whole sign houses, for everyone who's got, um, well, everyone's got zero Aquarius somewhere if you're using whole sign houses. And I guess um, the intermediate house cusps are a bit of a different thing, okay? And the, the question around that would be, well, you know, uh, everyone's going to have zero Aquarius somewhere in their chart. So does that mean that every single person on the planet is going to go through, you know, massive transformations from the point of view of Pluto when Pluto enters Aquarius? It's very difficult to answer that question. Um, and it's also difficult to, to say 100%, you know, if you've got, um, let's say zero Aquarius um, on your ninth house cusp or on your third house cusp or on the 12th house cusp or the 11th, I'm talking about what's called intermediate house cusps. It's, it's a hard question to answer. So for those of you that do have zero Aquarius with through whole sign houses in an intermediate house cusp, I'd really love for you to keep me updated with, um, what you start to see when Pluto moves over that house cusp. For those of you that have zero degrees on an angle, such as the ascendant, the IC, the descendant and the midheaven, I almost expect that you will experience very profound changes in your life. Of course, that will depend on the native, the soul, their chart and a number of other things that are going on. But in any case, everyone is up for some type of um, transmutation or transformation or purging or uh, powerful shift in their life next year when Pluto first ingresses into Aquarius. Now, by the time we get to May of next year, Pluto goes retrograde at zero of Aquarius. So it doesn't get very far at all. And then it goes back into Capricorn again. And it traces the degrees of 27, 28 and 29 again. So it gives us a, an interlude, a taste, a, just a small window 
kind of opens around March next year and it, it sets the stage as it were, but then it goes back to the later degrees of Capricorn to do its final closure completion on what Pluto in Capricorn has meant collectively and what it has meant for us individually. Then it stations direct on the 10th of October, 2023. Um, and then it doesn't get back into Aquarius until the 21st of January, 2024. Then, yeah, that's right. It goes back into Capricorn again, 2nd of September, 2024 stations direct on the 29th degree so we're looking at another two years uh, more or less of pluto you know winding up his journey in in the sign of capricorn and most of what's had to have taken place with pluto and capricorn has happened um, but there will be some some final um curtains closing of certain things and we will see that collectively and uh, personally in our own life furthermore if you have planets at in the cardinal signs so in capricorn aries cancer or libra then pluto when he treks the 27th 28th 29th degree of capricorn over the next two years whilst making an ingress into aquarius you are finishing something um, very big in your life, right? Because Pluto will either be conjunct a planet, square or opposite, right? Uh, any of your personal planets in cardinal signs. So these are really important years for, for the Capricorns, Librans, Aries and Cancerians that have planets in those later degrees. That's all I mentioned in that three minute video. And I just wanted to bring that up again here because I will come back and do a very deep dive about all of this. But those are some of the things to kind of start contemplating about your own chart, right? And where you're at at the moment with Pluto and transiting Pluto. But today's um, sharing was really about Mercury Pluto and uh, just how fascinating I find this particular transit and journey and just what it's brought up you know um just in my own observations and the things that i've been very interested in um you know relative to the jeffrey dharma thing etc so i'd love to hear what uh what the messenger has brought to you what has been uh revealed to you what what you've managed to to purge or to see um more clearly or more more deeply, you know, about yourself or your own life or the world, you know, just different things. I'd love to hear, you know, your experiences. And um, I'll see you guys soon with more. Much love and many star blessings. And, uh, yeah, we haven't stepped into the new moon yet, so that's coming up as well, which I did a video for, and some of you have already seen it. So thank you for your comments on that, and thank you for watching that, and thanks for watching this, and see you soon. Bye.